In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to make this tension set loop pendant. Check it out. For this project, I'm using this strip of silver that's four mil wide. It's 0.9 of a mil thick. And at the moment, it's 60 mil long. What I'm gonna do is roll out around about 15 mil from both ends and turn the ends into square wire uh, by using my roll mill. But if you haven't got a roll mill, it doesn't matter. Just start with a strip with the same dimensions, except make it around about 80 mil long. That should be enough. And then you can just file the profile into it. Uh, I'm gonna use this nice citrine as the feature stone. You can use any stone and it can even be oval. You'll see how easy it is to adapt this design for whatever stone you've got. Uh, this one is eight mil. It will deform a little bit, so keep an eye out because you can then straighten it in the flat part. So I'll take my time and show you exactly what I mean. So um, I'll just open the rolls up and I'll put it into this one here and tighten the rolls up and then just roll to the mark. I've just tightened up, turned the handle about 15 minutes on a clock dial just to take it. You can see already that it's starting to um, reduce that way and it's not distorting so it's working quite well. Hardly any pressure on it but when I roll the piece through it will tighten up a, a bit but now I know that I've got the, the same thickness all the way along and I'll go along and then bring it out the other side. So that will um, make it all the same thickness and also take out any distortion that you might have there. So that should be about the right length. I think I can work with that. I've got just a fraction under eight centimeters or 80 mil. So that's how it looks. And that's pretty much what you'd have to file um, into the strip if you haven't got a roll mill. That's easy enough to do, but if you've got a roll mill, you might as well use it. Just take it up to cherry red. I'll go through with this. Keep the drill lubricated, it will last a lot longer. Okay, so now that makes it easier for cutting out. saw blade in. I'm using a 4.0 saw blade. A 3 or a 4.0 will be fine for this. And if you're lucky, you might be able to find a, a needle file that you can fit in there just to tidy it up. Otherwise, you can just use your saw blade and just do the the sideways cut, which turns your blade more or less into a file. So I'll just show you how that goes. Pretty much going straight along the cut line there, but it's just scraping the metal off rather than cutting it off. And uh, I'll first of all shape the bottom parts, the actual drop part. So I place my half round pliers in between the slots and just I'll just pull it around and. Just use your fingers as much as possible and make it, keep it as neat and tidy and consistent as possible as well. And what you want to make sure you're doing as well is lining up those slots. You can see as I am now, it's not quite right. So I just need to start bending this side a little bit more. That's 
so it's looking. And now I can finish off shaping it. I want to bring bring it in at this point, and I'll do that by keeping the ends together and just squeezing it with my fingers. Now, if you're using a harder metal, you might need to use nylon pliers like this. So try not to use steel pliers because it will just put tool marks on. Eliminate as much gap as possible by filing the surface really flat. Now, I'm not going to solder it right down here. We need a little bit of uh, leeway there for opening it up to put the stone in later. So uh, it will just be the top of your roundabout. 20 mil if that, 15 mil I'd say. Run down. I'm losing a little bit of the ends, they're just melting a bit, but that is that is fine because as I said I'm going to cut it down anyway, I level it up. So just tap it one way and the other. Trim off the end and uh, carry on with a finer file, get rid of those heavy file marks and then finish off with 400 then 1200 emery paper and well clean because we won't be able to get into this round now don't forget it is open at this point so you have to be really careful that you don't distort it so um, and of course if you want a shorter pendant than um, how this will end up then cut it down first and make sure the solder runs for further down and so I'll just create a more softer curve towards the end the body of the pendant. Now I just want to point something, we're almost at the point of contact and that's about it. Now when you put a chain through that, the chain's thick enough, it ain't going to come out at that point but if you're not sure um, you can just get it to close right up and put some solder on that. Before I put the stone in I'm going to just countersink the slots on the inside and that'll just um, secure the stone a little bit more so um, you might not need to do this but if you do then just be really really careful because at this stage you don't want the bird to slip and mess up the nice finish on your piece of jewellery you can see the way that I hold my work I make sure that I've got a good connection between both hands so now I'll place the stone in and um, see if I can do it with my fingers, there we go, without using my pliers, so that's that's good. Now it's not very secure like that, so what I'm going to do is use my nylon pliers, once I find them, just to give it a squeeze and try and lock that stone in, so I don't want it wobbling around like that. So if I just close it in, at, first of all I'll go at the bottom and give it a little bit of a squeeze around like that and then just grab it on the bail end and squeeze it in there now it'll get to a stage where it won't come out but you might have a little bit of movement so that's up to you if you want to get rid of that movement just carry on with the squeezing one side then the other And that movement is absolutely minimal. You can see that it's placed in there really nicely. And it's finished, but I am going to give it a polish on my polishing motor. I don't like to leave just a, um, a tumble finish. It's almost like an eggshell finish. It's not quite the high polish that I prefer. So I'm going to give it another polish and I'll then give you a chance to have a look. And there we have it, the tension set technique in a loop design. And as you can imagine, there'd be a lot of possibilities for this technique. So I've kept this symmetrical, but you could have it offset. And I'm starting to think of other designs and even implementing this idea into a ring. So uh, 
watch this space, I think I'll be doing more lessons like this. <laughs>